Hello, what's going to be? How's it hanging? How's it happening? You guys know this is. This is Kevin from the Code Progression Podcast, sponsored by Dark Vision Systems, the best custom computer building. Whether it's for your gaming needs, creative needs, music needs, whatever you need, Dark Vision Systems has the build for you. They've been dubbed the Metal Core Computer Company by Ryan Kirby from Fit for a King because when it comes to streaming, that's what he uses. Get $100 off your entire building. It's called CPPod at darkvisionsystems.com. Link trips to the podcast. Thank you guys. Now time for feature presentation. Let's go to Germany and talk to the band. Set your sails. Jules from the band is on the podcast today. We're talking about the brand new album, Bad Blood, the writing process it took, and how it went from a completely different standpoint from their previous album, talking more about depression. It's more about that empowering, getting past it feel, and literally was inspired like, not by, but like the last scene in 8 Mile, where Eminem just owns his own shit. Oh yeah, that's kind of what's inspired by. You guys ready? Let's go! Yeah. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Court Progression Podcast. You know I love to go all across the world with this podcast, interviewing great bands in the rock metal scene from all over the world. And right now we're going right back to one of the hotbeds for anything heavy. That's right, we're going right back to Germany to bring you one hell of a band right now. The brand new one for this band called Bad Blood releases on April 12th, so... Yeah, this is the best way to get ready for it, get into the know, and get to know the band as well. So please welcome Jules from the band. Set your sails to the podcast. So Jules, welcome to Core Progression Podcast. What's up? Thanks so much for having me. I'm a little nervous. I'm, I was looking forward to this. So let's go. Let's jump into it. All right. Now you're making me a little more nervous. Like you were looking forward to it. Now nervous. I'm like, no, I got to bring the heat. I got to do something. I got to make sure this <laughs> is the best ever. So you go off on this and be like, you know what? That was a good one. I want to do that one again. Well. I, I hope at least you want to do this again after we're done with this, but let's jump into it because of course the big thing is brand new album, Bad Blood coming out on April 12th, second album for the band after Nightfall in 2022. And overall from the first album till now to this, this upcoming one, just biggest question is, is what has been the biggest change you've seen in the band so far? Biggest like change in terms of growth, whatever it might be, biggest positive change. Cause I want to get some more positivity on you and the rest of the band. So let's start out with that. <laughs> That's a good topic, actually, because um, Nightfall is pretty, pretty much about my fight with with um, depression, and it's very dark um, and very deep. And with Bad Blood, it I mean, it does have songs on it, um, which are about depression too. But it's also more looking forward and more standing up for yourself. And it has a different vibe. I feel like it's not. I'm not stuck into that darkness and stuff like that i'm more looking forward and um yeah i don't know i think it's uh, i think we've grown a lot as a band and um i feel like my songwriting changed a lot um and yeah i'm i think it's it's more forward more straight in your face and that's what i what i like about it i cannot wait to play this thing live gonna be sick I would be a little remiss if you're like, oh, I'm not looking forward to playing this live, especially with <laughs> the way the topic goes from talking more about depression, being more upfront, staying up for yourself. And you said it kind of changed your songwriting to going through this process to get to this album. So before diving into the whole mentality of it even further, what was the change in your songwriting process like to really bring this forward on Bad Blood and to have that different perspective from dealing with more depression and dealing with some things that are a little bit darker to having more of that, you know, empowered confident feel that bad blood has to offer um it was i mean i went through a lot of bullshit um within the past year and i had to deal with a lot of betrayal and shit like that and it was so refreshing to to start songwriting in a different from a different perspective to um to to as you already said the the stand up for myself more and like like yeah, I don't know, man. It, it, I mean, lyrically, it changed a lot. I feel like not on every song, but um, yeah, I, I'm more positive in a weird kind of way, like aggressive positive kind of that. And it felt so good to get this off my chest and to to write songs which are more upfront, which are more in positive. But I mean, not really, but like. I don't know. They have a different vibe and it was so good to come out of that darkness and the to see myself being able to write different different lyrics, different write about different topics. So um yeah, 
I'm really happy with the outcome. I, 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 I've had like three months for this thing. I wrote this thing in three months and it was so fucking exhausting. Um, I'm so happy it's done. <laughs> I mean, I would assume writing this thing for three whole months, especially for the 10 songs that are on there, just has to be exhausting going through this and really taking stock in everything that you've gone through the past year, ever since Nightfall was released as well. Just taking all of this into account, taking this different kind of feel of songwriting into account as well, and trying to make sure that you were being more upfront, you're being a little bit more brash with what you were speaking about and having more of that confidence behind there. Because of course, we go back to Nightfall, dealing with a little bit more of those sensitive topics with depression. It's going to put you in a certain headspace. And there's going to be certain things with those lyrics where I've seen this from a lot of artists tend to put more things in metaphor to not necessarily put it as full upfront out there but at the same time allow them to be a little bit more protected from the specifics while also still connecting with the audience wholeheartedly because you're connecting on that emotion and people are able to take that emotion and relate to it themselves through their own perspectives from their own personal experiences. But with Bad Blood, now it's a little bit different. Having more of that upfront, more of that brashness, now you're essentially dealing with those emotions that you went through through the past year, year and a half, two years. Everything that you went through, really going through, dealing with it and trying to put those words on paper, trying to put those words in the song. How is everything going to flow? Is this going to come out as forceful and as impactful as you want it to? So it's going to be exhausting trying to go through that because emotionally you're going through these moments and these experiences over and over and over and over again to try and find the right words, to try and find the right patterns, to try and find the right pitch to really hit on this. But at the same time, it is exhausting. You're doing, you're dealing with personal things and personal issues you might not want to have to go back through again, but you have to go through them over and over and over to get this kind of an outcome. Yeah, hundred percent. But that's also not only negative, it's also positive because you're, when you're playing it live for like, I don't know, I've played Nightfall 400 times or something like that, playing it live and going through the same emotions over and over again. And then at some point you just stop worrying about it. You, you stop thinking about it. It's just, I mean, it's just a song for me and um, I I went through it and, and I'm done with it. And that's like, what I always like to call it self therapy because that's what it really is, you know. Um, you take something out of your life, and you, and and for the most part, it's something negative. Um, whether if it's a fight with a friend, or I don't know, going through depression, and you have to deal with it on a like on tour on a daily basis. You have to go through it over and over and over again, and. Once the point comes on which you just go like, fuck it, it doesn't hurt me anymore. I'm, it's, you know, I can just sing it out and it's just a song. Perfect. That's the goal for for this chapter, for this new chapter, for, for Bad Blood, going through all the emotions over and over again until I'm done with it and I can write new songs. And, you know, that's the best thing for me as a songwriter to go through it over and over again. I take a look at it from a little bit different perspective, but I believe it still has the same outcome where by going through that all over and over again and performing these songs and really writing it down, it's you have to go through it. But then instead of just being over with it, essentially you own that, you own that emotion, you own that mm -hmm. part of it. Mm -hmm. And it becomes a part of you where really at the time where the, not only the emotion, but not only the, uh, the topic or whatever happened, that experience, but maybe the people that are uh, also involved with it on top of that, people that are listening to the song and now getting for that for the first time. They can't use, it feels like you can't use any of that against you because you spoke about it. You own it. It's like, well, if you're going to try and right. use this against me, you know, what does that kind of say on you? It reminds me of the movie Eight Mile where the last rap battle where Eminem just constantly goes off. I'm yeah, like, this right. is what you're going to use on me. But now let me talk about you in this sense. It's like, yeah. well, what can you say about him now if he just basically, you know, owned it himself? What, what else you got yeah. on me? And it's just a powerful feeling that allows you just to continue to push forward and become even better for as a musician better as a person and overall just a happier being yeah man a hundred percent a hundred percent and that's exactly the case with the saw and bad blood i'm sorry my voice is a little uh, i've had some vocal cord problems that's why it sounds a little weird um and i've had that with bad blood in specific also with um there's a, another song on the record called two-faced motherfucker and and Halo and all these songs are about the same topic about um betray betrayal within a friendship and and I don't know I've had to go through a big shitstorm within the German music industry but 
you know, it was just a, a private person trying to sabotage my career by spreading rumors and lies about me. And that's when bad blood happened. Um, and it is so good to hear that because it gives me so much confidence. It gives me so much strength because it, it's not, you know, I wrote a thousand lyrics for this and I came up with lyrics which are which aren't like you are a bad person, I hate you, fuck you, you know. Um, I wrote it a little differently, like you can rot with this bad blood, I don't give a fuck. If you wanna stick with it, you you can do it, you can whatever, you know, it's your problem, it's not mine anymore. I'm done with it, I'm moving forward. And this is so much cooler to come up with, with this point of view, like saying, you know what, fuck it. It's your problem, not mine anymore. And I've had that with like three songs or something. And it felt so good to see that and, and even have support uh, on, on this specific song from Adrian from Zebra Head. And I don't know, it gave me so much more confidence, so much strength to, to walk out of this even stronger and more positive than I've ever been. And that's so cool to see. See, now what's even crazier is the fact that, again, this whole entire story where you wrote three songs about it, Bad Blood, TFMF, because I know the last two words are motherfucker. I cannot remember what the first two were, even though you told them maybe like a minute and a half ago, and Halo. Those are my three favorite songs that were on the record, specifically the my favorite what? being Halo. And it, it makes sense where it's there's something that's so powerful that you're really trying to work through it. You're trying to own it and just put it out into your music. And this three-layered just overall story that goes through three separate songs especially for me, just felt like they came across the best, the most powerful, and just had that most invigorating, you know, self-confident, upfront feel, especially when you got to Halo as well. Halo never pulled a, a punch at all. And I'm just thought, that was when I kept coming back to every time I kept listening through the album stream. It's like, okay, I'm listening through it, listening through it, listening through the whole entire thing. Then I just jump back to Halo once again. I listened through yeah. a couple songs, jump back to Halo. I could not get out of that song. It was so good. It's my favorite, actually. It's my favorite. And I'm a huge breakdown fan. I love writing breakdowns. I just love it. And when I when I wrote the song, I wrote the uh, record, the entire album with my producer. And when we wrote Halo and we came out with the breakdown, I was like, yeah, this is it. This is it. This is like so straight and so simple, but sometimes it's the best. The best riffs sometimes are the simple, the simple ones. And I love Halo. Halo is, it, it has pretty much the same message um than bad blood but it's i don't know it's another slap in the face from a different point of view and i love it i love the vibe of it it's my fave actually <laughs> i really i mean it was my favorite too and one song that it technically really reminded me of and really brought more of this like feeling back was the first time i listened to nightmare by the band from ashes to new especially the way the bridge and the breakdown flowed into each other like the whole entire okay. standpoint it didn't pull like you didn't pull any punches on that the breakdown doesn't let you down at all rougher guitars the beat on the drums just keep that heavier feeling going you got the uncleans going in there as well to really bring more of that force and allow the guitars and drums to try a couple of different things within their measures in the second half of that breakdown to get a little bit heavier do a little bit more of this manic kind of feel to it but again it's the unclean vocals that still bring forward that force and allow that experimentation to happen on the back end to allow that final chorus to just come through really pop and again like i said this is my favorite song on the album and it's you said it was yours too so Everybody that's listening to this, when, you know, the album comes out, make sure, make damn sure, as Taking Back Sunday once said, to listen to Halo. You do not want to miss out on this thing. Trust me, you don't. If if you're like me and also really like the song Nightmare by From Ashes and New, you're going to listen to them and be like, oh my God, they did it again. <laughs> I need to listen to the song now. I don't know Nightmare from, from Ashes to New, actually. I, uh, it's it's very weird. I don't listen to a lot of music actually because it's so distracting for me to, you know, I don't know. My head is constantly like filling up this stress and I don't know, there's so much chaos going on. And every time I listen to a song, it, it sticks in my head. And then every time I grab my guitar or something, the exact same thing comes out. So <laughs> it's very weird um, for me to listen to a lot of music. So I, I listen I don't know, man. It's very weird to say this, but I don't listen to a lot of music myself. Um, I listen to, I don't know, music I know I've known for 20 years, something like ACDC or something I'm totally comfortable with and just listen to it. Um, I listen to it. 
sounds pretty good. If it's if it's um simple, uh, if it's com uh, comparable to Halo, I need to listen to it. Yeah, I mean, at least I thought it was. Maybe the uh, especially when you get uh, Matt from Ratchet when he puts his little rap parts in there, it might not necessarily be the most similar thing. But again, it's just for me the overall sound really picked up on the overall uh, motion that and sound that I was really taking part and really enjoying from Nightmare. So that's why I equated it to this. But it, it yeah. is a little bit weird to hear that, you know, you really don't listen to music all that much, but it makes sense where if you're listening and you really get into a song, then you're going to try and write something and it just, it just comes out as that. And instead of that, you're trying to find a way to make sure that for you personally, you're letting your whole entire creative being just flow throughout this whole entire album, throw, flow throughout your music, flow throughout the creative process so that it comes out genuinely how you want it and doesn't constantly have this overarching influence that certain songs can getting stuck in your head would end up having. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Now, I mean, I'm right now I started writing for the next record. That's why I'm not listening to a lot of music right now, but um, I would love to because every time I listen to a, a different band, I'm like, oh my God, yes. Yeah. Give me a different, a different vibe, different guitars, different drums, everything. Cause I'm stuck in my Cubase listening to the same shit all the time and it drives me nuts, man. Seriously. But, um, yeah, I need to listen to more music. Definitely. But I don't want to be so influenced by, by, by different artists. I don't know. I feel like the best. I mean, of course you're influenced. Every musician is influenced by other musicians. And that's a pretty cool thing, I guess, because if you inspire other people and you're, you, you're being inspired by other people, that's fucking amazing. You know, it's like a legacy mm. and, um, that's a beautiful thing. But for some reason, my brain isn't able mm. to cut it off then <laughs> while I'm still writing. So yeah. But that's quite all right. It just speaks to the self-awareness that you have when it comes to writing your music, because if you're going to listen to music and it's going to have such a heavier influence on you when you write, you don't want to end up just becoming and having certain songs become like a carbon copy of somebody else or somebody else's yeah. style. Of course, you want to let those influences ride, but you don't want those influences to be so overarchingly present that it just doesn't really make sense. But it, it makes sense. You still want to listen to music as well to potentially get some of these ideas, have those influences in there. But again, it's it's all that self-awareness part of figuring out, you know, this is how you work. You know how your brain operates when it comes to listening to music. So again, how can you figure out a way to listen to music oh, that's new, that's coming up, that's current, that's really going to potentially get some of the creative juices flowing. But at the same time, when you're in the writing process, not letting all of those different influences and different sounds in your head from those songs come so overarching in Music for Set Your Sales where now the whole entire flow might just not necessarily work from one song next or one album next because... It just is, you know, in your head at that same point. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm really trying to stay away from your music, but once I'm I'm out of this, um, out of my songwriting process, and and everything is done, and um, I can relax and chill, and then I will sit down and listen to all the music. Um, but yeah, yeah, there are so many great bands out there, you know. I need to listen to way more music. I only listen to like Wage War and Memphis May Fire and ACDC and I don't know. And I've I've listened a lot to Paris lately, like um the the new record. I don't know how it's called, but it's such a great thing. It's so different from everything that I that I listen to, um usually. So it's so cool to listen to different. Mm -hmm. Uh, types of music even man i need to listen to more music i have to i have to write down a note for myself <laughs> to you remind know, me what we, what we actually might have to do is is when you're done with the writing process that you're working in right now when that's all completed what we might have to do is is just let me know and i can put together a whole like spotify playlist yeah. of of Please. specific specifically songs and artists and everything around there that when I was listening through the whole entire Bad Blood record that I was picking out and thinking of going through this. Of course, yeah. I'm going to include From Ashes to New on there. There's other bands and other artists that I was even picking up on as well as we were going later through the album. Because when you brought up the fact that this was more about being upfront, more brash, more about building up that confidence once again, there was a certain sense of especially more of this empowerment overall feel, especially in a lot of the courses that you were writing, that I was picking up on other artists that I know of. Artists like, I mean, there's a couple 
couple of Hailstorm pieces I picked up in there, some New Year's Day, some Diamante. So starting to send those songs like overdue and be like, this is where for this song, some of the pieces I was picking up on in terms of overall emotion and like overall feel that the song was presenting. Of course, are they carbon copies of each other? Absolutely not. They are definitely not that. But the overall way that they impact that certain emotion that you're supposed to feel in the song and the certain theme, that's how they hit. And that's what's going to hit you in a very similar fashion. Yeah, 100 percent. I'm looking forward. Seriously, <laughs> please do that for me. I'd love <laughs> to go through these songs. Yeah, that would be so cool. And probably <laughs> it's it's pretty similar. I don't know. Probably I, I will be going like, what? Are you serious? <laughs> Sounds pretty much the same. Fuck. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. I could easily tell you that uh, Nightmare by From Ashes is going to be on the like the first one on that list because there's no way I'm not including that as the first one if that was the first one we brought up. Like, and it's because it, it also met, works with Halo too. I'm like, come on, that's like that's the one. Yeah, <laughs> I need to listen to it. I think I'm going to listen to it right after this interview. Oh boy, and, and, and then I you got to let me know it's like what you think because I that that band became like I I didn't even know about them until the pandemic hit. And then they became one of my top 10 favorite bands to go and listen to, see, whatever. Any chance I get to go and see them play live, I'm like, shut up. Take my money. <laughs> Do they have a female singer? <laughs> they don't. It's uh, a group of four guys. They've got a, it's kind of like a, It's they've got a, they've got just like a normal screamer and singer. And they've got one guy that does more of the rap part. So it's kind of like a Linkin Park type mix. I, you know what? I have to, <laughs> um, you know what? I love the fact that you were not comparing me to a female fronted band because <laughs> I get it's like 99% people go like, oh, you sound like, I don't know. I don't even know the names. You know, I'm very bad with with uh, knowing different bands. So they go, like, oh, you sound like her. You sound like her. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> it's not not just because I'm 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 a woman. You have to compare me to another woman just because we have female voices um but rather focusing on the style of the music or the style of the vocals and stuff like that so that's pretty cool yeah because i know from the other ones too when i mentioned like hailstorm new year's day diamante those are def those are more female bands that have more of that like again more that like empowered feel at some of the later songs on bad blood had but when it came to halo it's like no if if, if the instrumentals are going to pick up on a certain style in a certain way like regardless of what it is you, you gotta put it out there you gotta say it and that's the one that absolutely hit for me which is again it just kind of threw me off to, in terms of where the record was going even before that and i'm like how is how is this equating but then again it ended up being my favorite song on the album so i'm just nice. gonna say that's a win <laughs> <laughs> holy man i'm i was a little stressed out because you know what Every time a new record comes out or a new song comes out, I'm freaking out. I'm having a mental breakdown as fuck. I'm totally, I was literally laying on my floor crying. I called the boys. I called our management. I was like, there's no way, no way we're going to release this. It's so bad. It's so bad. Everything sucks. I have to rewrite the entire fucking album. And I was so freaking out because I don't know. I have such high expectations and I, I always think that nothing's good enough, no matter what it is I'm doing. Um, it's not good enough. So especially with these, I mean, it's not a concept album, right? It's, it has different songs. They could be singles like being, um, released separately. So I'm like, Oh my God, this sounds so weird. They don't fit really. It's like, I don't know. We cannot really sit. I was freaking out. And um, needed some time to settle myself <laughs> down and to, to really take the time to, to sit down and listen to the entire thing. Because I was so stuck in the songwriting process. I was like, oh, I need to change this synthesizer. I need to, to rewrite this guitar. I don't know. This doesn't really fit and stuff like that. I was so freaking out. And the boys went like, if you don't shut the fuck up, <laughs> you, you, we're going to come over and hit you <laughs> slap your face so you will realize that this is a good record you've done your best and, and it turned out great we're gonna release it and um yeah so it's pretty i'm, I'm very, very happy you like it very happy 
but it also comes with the problems of like having that perfectionist mentality where there's always going to be peace, especially when you're in that full songwriting mode that you think, especially just at that time, maybe just what's going on in life at the moment, maybe just the other things are going on that are not just living within this memory, living within this space that are influencing it. Maybe, you know, you're trying to focus in on some of those negative times and how you built up past them, but all you're focused in on in terms of the rest of life is maybe things are going great. Maybe you're just having a great time and then that happiness ends up going in there. So when you're trying to write some of this stuff and you're trying to relate to, once again, you have that little bit of extra emotion from the outside that's coming in, kind of just like, kind of having like this nice little like sheer gloss over it that kind of puts in a little bit of a different perspective. So even though you may have had it absolutely right, hammer it home the first time, now you're going back there. It's like, well, I'm not 100% sure on this part just based off of that. But that's the beauty of having other members of the band as well, being able to listen to this and being able to basically say, hey, this is where you were in this headspace when you were really into it. This is what came out of it. Now that the headspace is starting to turn a little bit of a different path and you're going through this again, you're thinking of a different way. Don't mess with where you really were when this came out as powerfully as we all connected with it. So that's the beauty of having other people in the band. They help, especially for me as a songwriter, help make sure that you understand, you know, when you absolutely hit on something from the emotional standpoint, from the storytelling standpoint, you're trying to work with. Yeah, that was beautiful. That you that these were beautiful words. That that was very cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I need that a lot. And the guys are having a hard time with me. I know that. I'm not a I'm not a easy person. Um, I was doubting everything. I was freaking out about everything. Nothing's good enough and we could have done better and it's not gonna work. Let's quit the band. Let's fuck everything. It's, I'm not a, a musician. I don't deserve being here. Um yeah, I, I have that a lot, and especially with uh, releasing new music. It's it's a nightmare. I don't know why they're still there. I mean, the boys, the guys, why they're still here, but <laughs> I don't know. Man, yeah, I'm very happy that I'm done with it and, and that it's all written and all released. I mean, not, not already, but, you know. Getting there. The, at least the, the label <laughs> has the final masters in Oh, yeah. But also it was pretty cool because I always uh, I also um, did the artwork with her designer and sent him a lot of my a lot of pictures of my eyes and stuff. And I came up with this idea of of, of making it look a little bit like punkish 90s kind of style. And um, so I was involved into the entire creative process of making this record in seeing it finally coming together was pretty cool and all the hot work paid off already. I would assume so it is. And that best part about it is there's still a whole entire, the rest of the album still has yet to come out. 2024 still has yet to complete. I mean, we're only through the first part of this. There's a lot more to go and a lot more great things happen for set your sales. And hopefully it means a lot more shows and I'm still hoping to get catch a show at some point in time, but always when I talk to a band that's from a completely different country and across a completely different ocean than I am, I'm like, this ain't going to be the easiest thing to accomplish. Yeah, it's so hard, man. It's so hard. Like touring as a small band became so hard. It's so expensive. It's crazy. You know, when you start making music, you never think about stuff like that. You just go like, oh, let's write music. Let's release music. Let's go on tour and have fun with our friends. and at the end of the day, you see all these bills and all these calculations with, I don't know, man, 10,000 bucks here, 15,000 bucks here, stuff going to have to pay for every everything and everyone. It's not being paid. You know, we have to work for it. We have to, I don't know, it's so hard. And especially coming to America, <laughs> dude, I don't know, man, if we could ever avoid that. I'd love to. It would be my favorite. Seriously, I'd love to do that. Um, but right now we're just trying to stick with Europe and try to, to, to. I don't know. Pay for that because it's fucking expensive, man. It's crazy. Well then, Jules, I got two more questions for you. One of them's gonna directly relate off of that because I think it's absolutely perfect due to the fact that again, touring has gotten expensive, making music has gotten expensive, and. It's just the, everything's gotten expensive. 
But when it comes down to set your sales, when it comes down to you guys going out on the road, touring, releasing the brand new album, and hopefully at some point coming to America, what can we do as fans to help support that right now and help get you to that next step? What can we do to help you? Stream the fuck out of our songs and and buy the record. That's that's the biggest thing. And buy our merch because merch is for especially for small bands like us the biggest financial income we've got. Um, we've got new merch coming up, very cool merch with which I I also help design and um, I don't know help us buying tickets, but selling tickets. But you know <laughs> you have to come to germany for that um but yeah i don't know man you can order the the record already you can pre-order it through napalm um shipping worldwide and that's gonna be a big support for us and yeah merch and the record yeah i mean i'm pretty sure i knew exactly it was gonna be merch in the record merch very much specifically because it's a lot of that goes right back to you guys so yeah yeah listen to what jewel said Go support, go support the band <laughs> doing literally just that. And I've got one more question for you. I've been asking this question to every band I've interviewed since September of 2023. And it's one of my favorites it does kind of okay. put you on the spot a little bit though, but I hope you're ready for it. So it's this Jules, can you give me three bands that you are absolutely loving right now that you would love to get more attention on? Now these bands could be bigger than you, your size, smaller than you, just bands that you want to see more people get involved with and get to know because I love to show more new music to people, so I always like to ask. Oh, man. I'm so bad at being spontaneous. <laughs> it's so weird. Ah, hold on a second. So, oh, man. Three smaller bands. Um, Dude. You know what? I, I just... As I already told you, I'm not listening to a lot of bands. Um, I'm currently listening to Wage War, Memphis, and ACDC, <laughs> actually. Go support ACDC. They do need it. No, they don't. So, um, <laughs> I think, mm, man, I would need some time for that. Um, I don't know. Spontaneously, there's a band called Panic Waves. They're, they're German. Ah, yeah. Okay. I got another one. Um, so Panic Waves, the singer is a friend of mine. He's, he's got one of the best voices. And I really mean that in the entire world for me personally. I love his style, the way he sings. Um, then there's another German band called Chaos Bay. They're also fucking awesome. They've just released a new, a new song. I don't recall the name, but you can just check that out. Very nice guys. Just visit visited them on a show they played here in Cologne a couple of days ago. And um, they're very, very cool. And number three, bro, I don't know. Um, do you have a band, by the way? I don't. Do you play in a band? No? You look like a bassist to me. <laughs> I'm not sure if I should take this as a compliment or an insult, honestly. Uh, I don't know either, man. <laughs> you do, yeah, you get the grooves. Okay. All right. You have to do it like higher. Oh, higher. I do not. Like higher. Yeah, higher. <laughs> Just lit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There you go. That's right. <laughs> oh, man. Um, okay. So, um, it's going to be Panic Waves uh, and Chaos Bay. And the third one is i don't know man ah okay you know what i got a german band for you a german band singing german uh lyrics but fucking cool melodies it's so weird probably to listen to it if you're not a native <laughs> speaker but i love it and they're called vinta so it's v-i-n-t-a mm -hmm. And they're going on tour with us. They're supporting us on tour. We're have we're having a co hatliner tour coming up, our first hat tour. And they're supporting us and they're such sweethearts and they're doing such great music. And I've never heard something like that before in my entire life. Um mm. and to be honest, I don't I'm not a huge fan of German music. I don't know why I can't really explain it, but dude, they're such great songwriters. I love it. Um, so yeah, if you want, you can check them out. 
they're super cute people and working their asses off for 15 years straight or something like that. Um, yeah, so they stay. Very German and very small German bands, but I like them. But that's how we get to know more new music. And I do have to say, you're the first person that's ever asked me during that question, do you have a band? That's the first time I've ever had that question. And also first time I've ever heard that I look like a bassist. So maybe I got, maybe I got to take a play. I'm not quite sure. Okay. I did actually play the, I did actually play the drums when I was a kid. I stopped when I was 14 though. See? See? (laughs) See you like, you like give me an impression of it? Just like, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. There you go. Okay. There you go. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You're definitely a drummer. Okay. I'll take that one. (laughs) For Vent, man. All right, well, I'm going to take that one. I'm going to ride high off of this one. And now it's time for this podcast with three very specific things. So first things first, remember, Say Yourself is a brand name called Bad Blood coming out on April 12th. And yes, if you're in Europe, if you're in Germany, they're going to be touring. So you get to go check them out. Lucky you. But if you want to make sure you can continue to support Say Yourself so they can continue making great music and continuing to tour and growing that touring base to go all over Europe and come to the U.S. as well, go script to the podcast where it says find Set Your Sales online, links and labels for everything, for social media, where you can stream the album and pre-save it, where you can order the album, where you can get merch, where you can find them online to get concert tickets, all of that stuff is going to be down there. I'm going to be your own personal Google on this one, so go and do it because, well, I did all the hard work for you. All you have to do is click and follow. And get some merch, yo. Come on. Go and do that. Yeah. yeah. Now it's time for number two. Jules, whenever I have guests in the podcast that I enjoy the podcast, I tend to make a certain promise. And I know we didn't have as much time as I would have enjoyed today because this conversation was great. I felt like we had gone for at least another like hour or so, but we'll save that for another day. However, the promise I like to make is this, and you've earned it. When, when I get to see you perform live for the first time, oh, I will come and say hi to you. But the promise I'm making you is this. First round's on me. Ah, nice. All right. I I keep that in mind. Yep, just just hold me to I it. The only the only way that I won't make it is if for some reason I get insanely injured in the pit, which hasn't happened yet. So fingers crossed yeah. on that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time for number three. As we're being this podcast conclusion, Jules, I can end by saying goodbye because this conversation was fantastic. I would love to be back on the podcast again in the future. On top of that, I made you that promise. I got to see you play live and I got to make sure that first round's on me. So this is not goodbye. This is I'll see you later. Thanks so much for having me. Well, folks, that was my interview with Jules from the band Set Your Sales. Now it's time for Kevin's final thought. One thing that really stood out to me was when it came to Jules really talking about writing this album compared to Nightfall, writing Bad Blood, and how it took a different approach from diving deeper into your own emotions, diving deeper into depression. Of course, we've heard a lot of that, and we've seen a lot of their bands do what they, you know, what they've done on Bad Blood in terms of really owning those emotions and getting past them and making sure they can't hurt you again by owning them. And when it came to the overall things of what the band was able to do here, what Jules was able to do here with their songwriting, it really shows. I mean, the album doesn't have necessarily more of this like melancholic feel to it at all. It has a little more of this confident feel to it. The songs have more of this empowered style, especially in some of the choruses as well. And it really comes forward to taking a look at yourself, taking a look at things that have happened in your life, not only owning the situations, but at the exact same time, owning just the fact that it happened. It's a part of you. And you know, if you own it, what are people going to be able to do? Are people going to be able to say like, oh yeah, you know, this happened to you. Yeah. So it happened to me. I own it. Whatever. Screw it. Who cares? It works. So I mean, it's really an empowering thing to be able to do. There's been a lot of people I know, even myself as well, we've gone through times where it just, it doesn't work. And it's just like, man, those moments really stick with us. And we're afraid of those moments. And we're afraid of how they make us feel. Once again, if we go back to them and like go rehash them. But when we do that and we own that, then we use those instances as this empowering being that allows us to go forward, realize the good those moments brought us, whether it's just the good of getting past it and making sure that moments like that can't hurt us again, what we learn from them. But it's really a powerful thing, and I'm glad the band really dove deep into that. So make sure you listen to Bad Blood when it comes on April 12th. Go to the description of the podcast where it says find, set your sales online, links, labels for the whole entire album, where you can follow them on social media, you can get some merch, you get some content, you get to support them so they can continue doing this and continue making music that you're going to love. Also, make sure you're subscribing to the Corporate Crush Podcast right down here. Brandon says every single Tuesday and Thursday on YouTube. Also, hit that follow button in Spotify and Apple Podcast because you get the full episodes there as well every single Tuesday and Thursday. Hit the like button on 
YouTuber, if you're on Spotify Podcast, help us push this out episodes in the algorithm further. Help get more people to know about these bands. Thank you very much. Thank you guys once again. Thank you, Jules. And on that note, that's going to be for the guests. Thank you for watching, listening to the Code Progression Podcast. My name is Kevin, and you guys know how I end every single one. So it's a big, healthy, and hearty. See you. <laughs>